Right, time to pot, riv pot rivet our um, bilge pump mount in. Got some pot rivets here and the pot rivet um, gun. I can't get to it with my uh, hand one, so we'll have to use the air, air um, pot rivet gun. So, gonna be a bit awkward to get to with this as well, I think, but we'll see how we go. That in there, no worries. It's a bit of a funny angle, but um, seems to work. Get these other rivets in. spot just reach it oh, can't get at it mmm that sucks Let's get the hand rivet and see if I can squeeze in there. Right, so this is one here is getting really hard to get at because I can't get access with it with my big riveter. So I'll try and get the hand rivet in there. And just get in there and try and squeeze the handle somehow. Good hard to see. Sorry. Okay. All right. So that's got that in there. Now we can lock the pump onto that. So we can mount our bilge pump now. So that's that there. So it just locks into place. In the right spot. There we go. Cable now will go across here in a conduit. It'll go sort of under the seat in a um, in that split conduit to protect it a bit. So we can also mount mount our um, light up here. Which is our anchor light. <coughs> so We've got quite a few cables here now starting to run everywhere. So that's where that's going to end up living. It's when it's being used. It can go like that. When it's out, down like that out of the road. When it's not. So again, we've got a heap of cables through here. We've got to tidy up. And then I've also got this cable here that has to run up here out of the road as well. So we've got our cable for our bilge pump here. I'll change the plans. I'm actually going to run it up the back here and then up the corner. And I've, what I've also done is run a cable which is gonna to go to the outboard. And this will be for a charge circuit that I wanna put in this motor. Hasn't actually got one at the moment. Um, I noticed when I purchased it under the flywheel, there's two green wires hanging out. And I think they're actually a coil that they may have pre-installed from factory, but just haven't put a charge circuit onto it. So I'm hoping once we get all this running, I'll fire that up 
check for AC power on that particular cable and then we'll um, see if we can put a voltage regulator and rectifier in there and run power from the motor back to the battery. So that's what this cable's for anyway. Um, yeah, so what we're planning on doing is I'm gonna run, run this cable obviously to the motor, but I might as well put it in this same conduit here as a bilge pump and tidy things up there. So anyway, we'll get this threaded up. So I'm just threading the cable through here at the moment and we'll pull that conduit through. You see it goes up behind the motor, uh, behind the bilge pump, sorry. Just keep, keep popping it in here, that'll protect it. This split conduit's not too bad when you're in a boat as well. If you, you can actually, you can put cables in this stuff and tape it right up and seal it 100% to stop things getting in it. But when you're running things under the floor, it's good to have that split in there. So when it eventually comes around to the bottom, if it does get full of water for some reason, it will drain out. So that's why we like using that. Bit fiddly to use, but anyway. So I've got all our joins in here. So nearly there, so that's the all the joins hidden away. And now we're just back to raw cable. What I'll do is I'll slide this down a little bit further, right to the end here. And then I'll put some tape on that end. And then we'll get this cable in there as well, but I won't bore you with that process. So here we've got the cable for the bilge pump already in this um, split conduit. So all I'm doing now is feeding the um, power wire in, the charge wire from the outboard in the same conduit. It's a bit fiddly, but once we get that in there, then we can thread that through the gunnel up to the control panel and be all nice and neat and tidy. Quick look in here. So this cable eventually is gonna come down the corner of the boat through here splits off to the bilge pump and also then runs to where the motor's going to go. So it's just a matter of running this, um, these cables down the front here now to the control panel. So it's starting to get a little bit busy in this section here. So we've got a cable coming up here, then we tap off a T, which, and then all these cables here will be all together that way. And then I've also got a transducer cable coming from the sounder back this way. I'll probably put that in its own conduit. Um, I normally like to run them totally separate from the electrics to stop interference, but I have noticed these days the sounders, it really doesn't make much difference and I don't have much choice, I'm going to have to run the cable, uh, transducer cable with the electrical cables anyway and most of these um, wires won't be active doing anything while I'm sounding anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Anyway, we'll get this down here, it's a matter of threading it through. So these gunnels on the boat here are quite handy for that. So all these cables as well are double insulated, which means each wire inside has got insulation, which is quite tough. And then on the outside of that has got another lot of insulation around both the twin cables. So it is, you could actually just run this straight down the side of the boat here. It's just if you've got a bit of vibration or it gets knocked around or whatever, um, this outside plastic stuff just, just helps it. Um, and it gives the spiders somewhere to live. Which freak you out when they fall out when you're in the middle of fishing somewhere. But anyway. They're only Australian spiders, what could possibly be wrong with them? Not like they're poisonous or anything. Right, so anyway, this is back to the control panel. Shove them through our pre-drilled holes. Like so. And then we'll just tidy this up a little bit. And we'll start getting this all covered over. All right, so we'll just tidy up this um, join here where these cables all meet the best we can. So we've got quite a few cables coming through here. I've got the um, anchor light, stern light, whatever you want to call it, coming through here as well. So what I'll do is I'll just tape up the junction as neat as we can.
So we're not waterproofing anything. All we're doing is just really protecting it from um, mechanical abrasion, vibration. It also just makes it look a little bit neater, I think. It's a bit extra work, but it does make them last a lot longer. I've done up plenty of boats now and I haven't had any electrical problems ever. So whether I'm just lucky or it works. So anyway, we'll do that. Then down here, we'll just continue threading these cables through. It's a matter of just grabbing them and pushing them in where you need them. Like that. Um, we'll just put a little bit of tape around every now and again, just to stop the um, split conduit opening up and it shouldn't but just helps a little bit all right so that now this sort of a t-junction here can now go back up under there out of the road. If we've got enough to go right to that back corner, so it's nice and neat there. That sort of jams under there like that. Seat comes in here to that corner and closes all that in. So this can now go inside the gunnel there. Tighten it up a little bit. Then we've got to get that into the control panel. I've got a hole underneath if I need to use it, but I'm hoping to get a couple, uh, I'm hoping to get everything through this hole here with drill. Anyway, not sure how that's going to work yet, but we'll work it out. Okay, so we put our rubber grommets in here to protect it a bit even more, and then it's just a matter of getting our cable that we've just run and poking it through the grommet. Get the camera out of the road will help. So that'll go like that. And that will sit inside here as well for a bit of protection. And this other cable here we've run. Not enough room to go in there, but I have got a grommet underneath, so I'll run this one down underneath, and that can come back up under under the one underneath the control panel. So I ended up drilling another hole in here instead. Uh, basically, it was easier than trying to run the cable all up all the way up underneath. I'll probably use the one underneath for the transducer cable. So anyway, that's all our little cables all buttoned up there. So we might start running this transducer cable now. Right, okay, so you can be lucky sometimes. Uh, we're just mounting our transducer. This is what come with the hummingbird sounder. Um, luckily, we took out a hummingbird sounder, a little basic one, and the actual holes from the old transducer um, actually line up perfectly. So there's two holes drilled there already. So they're the ones that will go on the slide. These are basically the screws that come with it. So these ones will go in here. Just do this temporary. I am going to stick a flex this on um, just to be safe. So we'll straighten these up a little bit. So that's the actual slide where the bracket's going to go that can go up and down. And it actually works out pretty spot on. Um, you work out the angle of the transom of the boat. And then this is a fairly flat bottom boat as well. So where that transducer's mounted previously is actually pretty much exactly where we're going to want to be here. So that's going to fit. Like so, all you do is make sure they're nice and straight up and down with the boat. Um, if you read the manual, there's a lot of waffling on about getting your boat level and put a plumb line on to work out your the transom angle and all that sort of stuff. So basically what the go is, um, you just make sure it's straight up and down the boat this way. And you have enough clearance that the centre line of this seam on this transducer here is just below 
the last points over this side. So you just make sure that that seam is slightly below the hull, like tiny, a tiny bit. These transducers are designed to mount dead flat level with the hull, and it's a side image one. Uh, sorry, this isn't side image, it's down image, but it will actually shoot straight down. Years ago, I used to always put a little bit of down on the back of the transducer so they'll skim better with clean water. These ones are designed to run dead flat, so pretty simple to install. I'm not gonna waffle on about this too long because there's a million videos online on how to install these. So basically, it's just a matter of getting it straight that way. When you, when you have this mounted, you can actually adjust the clicks on the transducer at what angle you want. And you can also adjust these shims if you want to get a fine adjustment as well. So basically it just means you whack it on your boat, get it nice and level with the with the hull, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, we're lucky the screws are already in the right spot. There's a locking screw in the center I'll put in. I'm gonna sicker flex it on, um, drill a hole for the cable, and let's just get it in there. Right, so what I'll do is I'll jam a, a level board, anything under the hull to get the, so you can see the flatness of the hull. And then when this is screwed up to a boat like that, this transducer, you can see that the, the yellow level is pretty much where the hole comes out. You can see the back of this transducer, juggling a few things here, is sitting up too far. So it actually needs to be sort of, you know, down. This needs to come down a bit to sit flatter, or if anything, slightly lower at the back. That's how we normally set them up. So what it means is I just need to change these little inserts that come with the transducer. Uh, little ratchets and you just change them around so when you lock it solid that this actually comes down a little bit to suit your boat and that's all i'm doing all right so we've had a bit of a play and i'm pretty happy with that i've got that adjusted exactly where i want it now so you can see the yellow again is the hull the bottom of it and i've got that pretty much level if not facing a tiniest amount down at the back um, the last thing you want to do is have the front lower than the back of the transducer because you can start getting um, air bubbles and all sorts of turbulence and can mess up your sounding. So anyway, that's where I'm going to mount it. I'll sick flex that on now and get on with the next bit. Okay, so we've um, finished mounting that. Got our um, transducer insert, little rubber insert mounted in there as well. It's all tightened up. And if you look at the angle of the hull, which is represented by pretty much this yellow line there, you'll see that's pretty much spot on. So that's good, so all we've got to do now is um, tidy up this cable, transduce cable, and run that up to the control panel, where the sounder is. Right, so we mounted our um, bracket for our sounder, uh, run the transducer cable up through the control head and along the gunnel of the boat here. Uh, power cable, that was pretty simple, that just went straight through the grommet that we've got under here as well. Uh, put a bit of sicker flex at the back to seal up this so rainwater can't get in there and drip into the control panel. So that cable there um, pretty much runs all the way down the boat here and to the back corner and then at the back here. So that's pretty much it there. I've got a bit of um, conduit over the, just the top bit there. I've drilled a grommet through so it can't rub. Put a little bit of silicon on there to stop it rattling around. It was actually, like, even though it was tight, it was rattling around quite a bit. So anyway, the other thing we do is when you run your cables for your transducers, you actually make a loop if you've got any excess cable. So what you actually do is double it up on itself, any excess, and then just curl it up. So you basically wind it up on itself, um, following the natural curl of the cable it's, itself. So you double it up and then make a coil out of it. And that can help stop interference, electrical interference coming through your boat as well. Last thing you wanna do is just roll it up like a normal cable. Um, yeah, so you just all loop it back on itself back and forth. So you just go round round once it's doubled together like that. And then I'll just tape that up and I'll stick that up underneath the, the um, fishing rod up, up here and cable tie that up in the corner of the road. Right, so because, uh, so because I want to get this um, excess cable tucked up underneath the boat here so I can then finish off this cable, um, I'm going to put these rod holders back in quickly. Um, so what I want to do is... Uh, yeah, mount these back in and what they what they had on here before was pretty much these little little screws or bolts I should say um, And they're a bit fiddly like so you put the bolt through you got a spring washer and a nut under that And then one of these obviously fell out because we found it in the bottom of the boat when we bought it um, So that's not ideal and to get your hand up under there and try and hold everything while still in it uh, It's pretty much in the too hard basket. So what we're actually going to do is we'll just screw these in so 
you have a quick look here. So where the screws line up is pretty much there. So obviously I can't just um, use existing holes because these are way too, holes are too big. So all I'm going to do is just twist this out to the side a bit more, angle it out, which is pretty much where I want it anyway. So I want it fishing, like when I'm fishing, I'll fish out the corners more anyway. So we're going to get away with it by um, basically doing that. Put our marks, do a quick drill, pilot hole, and we'll be able to screw that in there. And I might even put a bit of sicker flex underneath it, um, just to hold it a bit better. So you can see our new holes are away from the old ones. No one will ever see it. Should have sent a punch this first. Um, you could put sicker flex under here, but I think it's going to be strong enough without it. And then they're a pain if you ever want to shift them, so get our favourite drill. And at the end of the day, if they leak, it just leaks back into the boat anyway, so we're not really achieving anything by doing that. So now we can um, attach our cable underneath there and get all that get all that hidden away. Right, so while I was at it, I did the other side rod hold as well. All right, so all our cabling is pretty much done now. Uh, now that I've got that rod holder in like I was talking about, I can get the excess cable, which is up under there, all cable tied up onto here, a bit of a mounting point. Uh, all the rest of this cable up the back here, um, I'll probably sicker flex that on and put a bit of um, plumber's tape over it, temporary while, to hold it in place while it's setting. So the cable runs up the front there. Got our sounder mounted. Got all that cables coming through there. So that is pretty much it. My next job I'm gonna do is drill these bungs out. Uh, they're not too bad, but there's a, these have got a, just a broken O-ring, which isn't the end of the world. Um, but what I've noticed is the centers of these rivets uh, hollow and there's not much glue on the other side holding it. I'll be amazed if these don't actually leak um, Anyway for the sake of I think they're like four bucks Australian um, I've just bought a couple of these. What are they Ronston or something? Ronston? A couple of new plugs. Um, I'll drill these out, put brand new bungs in uh, Sicker flex them in while I've got the sicker flex out and they won't leak and there's a bit of peace of mind Because these are all starting to look a bit brittle to me but I'm probably overthinking it, but this boat will be moored for like a couple of days if I'm down the river. Um, so I'll have the automatic bilge going as well, just in case, but um, I just don't want things like this leaking, so I'm gonna just change them. Speaking of the bilge, um, I'm waiting on a part still, uh, waiting on a hose, uh, which comes from there, and I've got a 90 degrees bracket that I'm gonna mount here, so it can just pump straight out the back. So next episode we'll start changing these bungs and finish off some wiring. I've got to wire in the control panel and a few bits and pieces. So thanks for watching guys. Um, again, hit the like button if you could and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.